We end our study of Joshua today. Joshua had one last address to the people. His advice at Shiloh uh, was something he needed to say, but he felt that the people needed one more shot. They needed to learn what real commitment was. And so he gathered them at Shechem in a, a beautiful amphitheater, natural amphitheater between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. And he gave him, them an address from his very heart and a challenge to them. The first step was his call to commitment. And he did this by going back over territory that we are familiar with. He started raising up the stones of remembrance that he had talked about, those events that God had done in the life of the people of Israel to save them and to provide for them. He lifted them up in the verses just before we uh, started um, reading in our chapter. And again, his emphasis here is simply on having us remember the things that God has done in our lives to lead us and guide us and direct us. Because it changes our view. So often we are focused in on all the bad things or the problems that face us and we forget how God has taken us through things in the past and that God can be trusted. Our personal stones of remembrance do this for us. Each of us has had things that have happened in our lives perhaps that we can look back and say, God was really at work there. A much older pastor told the story of being in seminary and having not, not having two dimes to rub together. Two nickels, two pennies, whatever. His wife was pregnant. They had no idea how they were going to pay the doctor and the hospital bill. bill. He was working a job while going a full time while uh, she was, uh, he was going to school full time. They figured when the baby came, they would have about $160 and the bills, and again, this is going back, the doctor bill was going to be $250 and the hospital bill about $250. That's really going back. But they didn't have the money to pay it. His so wife went to her, her checkup before her due date and uh, the doctor was not a church going person, was looking through her chart and he said, oh, your husband's at the cloth. We don't charge the cloth. And she said, what is that? He said, we don't make pay preachers pray, pay. It was totally unexpected. That was part of the problem. But when they got down to uh, the due date, they had $163. That was a long way from what they were going to have to pay. But it just so happened that his wife went in just at a change of shift. Baby was delivered and they let her go that day, so there was one less day on the bill. On the, bill. the bill was $160. He had $3 left, so he bought his wife some flowers. God often does things, and we can just say, oh, that's just a coincidence. But so often in our lives, Coincidence after coincidence has happened. And we, if we're looking with eyes of faith, we see the ways that God provides. Things like that can change our perspective if we allow them to. And help uncloud our future and allow us to trust in God. Joshua made the logical connection with these great memories of God's work by challenging the whole nation to choose commitment. Then in verses 14 and 15, we see an extremely powerful and logically compelling challenge with this God who acted as he did in space and time and history for his people calls for commitment, then it's the logical thing we should do. It sort of predates the idea the Apostle Paul had in our text from, from Romans 12, where at the beginning he says, I urge you, therefore, brethren, to be by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your reasonable, which is the literal meaning, 
of service of worship. The word reasonable here is the word from which we get the word logic. It makes sense. It's rational. If you sit down and consider what God has done for you, his called commitment is a very logical thing for us to respond to. And of course, Joshua would do this, and this is a very dear verse to Nadine and I because it was our parents' wedding texts, both sets, and our wedding texts. He would say, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. His fierce independence added to his compelling power. Besides that power, there is also this challenge of urgency. He says, choose for yourselves today. Don't put it off, because he knew very well that our tendency to put things off often become a decision. A lot of people make decisions by not making decisions. By not making a decision, they take away many of their options. It's too late. And in many respects, he knew very well to not choose is to choose evil. Because God often calls us to do something at a moment when it is needed. And when we don't react, and we don't choose to follow God's way, we lose a great opportunity. Satan gets in the way. We have to learn to choose. When faced with the scriptures, we cannot doubt that we are called, every one of us, to a total commitment to God. I believe that most of us ought to be able to point to a time in our lives when we gave ourselves totally to God. If not a particular date, at least a season in your life when something really changed and you made the commitment to move forward to Christ. And if you haven't, today is the day to do it. Don't put it off. Because the perfect day for doing it is a call to communion. A day when we celebrate what Christ did on the cross for each and every one of us. As you take the bread and the cup, say, Lord, yes, I'm doing this for you because you did it for me. Joshua's challenge to a full commitment was sort of like a, the force of the sledgehammer as it hit the people. And no God, doubt the record of it in verses 16 through 18 was shouted by Israel's leaders and then a roar of affirmation spread from the throng. And one would think that this was going to be Joshua's high point. He finally got it across to the people. But verses 19 through 24 says he wasn't so sure. He came back and says, I think you answered too easily. He knew how fickle they were. He knew how easy it is to say, yes, I will follow you, Lord, and then go your own way. He knows how easy it is to make decisions without really praying something out. Without really asking God, is this the right decision? So Joshua gives them some more time to think about it. He goes over and over some of the things in their lives. He challenged them, first of all, in verses 19 through 20, uh, telling them you can't serve God easily. Now, it doesn't mean you can't serve God. He said you can't do it if you're relying on your own ability. You've got to follow God's lead. You've got to take God's input in your life. And then in verses 22 through 24, he gives a second warning and a response. He swore them to be witnesses against themselves if they did not follow. He allowed them to understand that they had sworn that they were going to follow God and that their swearing was going to have consequences if they broke their promise. He would go on to say, you know, when we haven't followed God, things haven't gone well for us. We've made a mess. And you can expect, if you break your promise, 
that the same kinds of thing is going to happen. God has been good to you. But when God withdraws his favor, all kinds of bad things can do. Now, he wasn't trying to be spiritually manipulative here. He was just saying there are consequences to not following God. You'll make a mess of your lives. And the people responded affirmatively in this, and it seems like he is satisfied. It really is seeming like he is satisfied with what they have said. But they had been warned. And we find in uh, the opening chapters of the book of Judges that the people had followed God and allowed him to be their leader for several generations after Joshua's death. And our text ends with those kinds of words as well. That as long as the leaders and elders of the people were still alive, and sometime thereafter, they followed the Lord. That original group of people who had heard and made that promise followed. It was going to be the future generations that would fall away. And we talked about that last week, that there is a tendency for individuals who have strong faith to have descendants who fall away. Why? Because they haven't met Christ themselves. They haven't made that decision. They're trying to live on their grandparents' or their parents' faith. To commemorate this, they have another very high moment at Shechem. It is another stone of remembrance, if you want to put it that way. They put something at that tree. Many commentators believe that oak is the very tree where Abraham and Jacob had spent time 400 and some odd years before. It was a sacred place. And they were to be reminded again by another set of stones, another time of memory, what God had done for them. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I'll see something and a memory comes up. Very often it's a positive memory, a memory I need to be reminded of. You're turning in a page and you open up a, a page and there's a bookmark or a note from the past. I've gone through some of my father's books. I still have in my library. And every once in a while I'll find something that my father had written down. A reminder of his, his faith. The end of the chapter talks about the death of Joshua. He had, completed, he had completed his task. He had run his race, and he finished it. Now as we come to the table of the Lord this morning, we are presented with what Christ has done for us. It is a stone of remembrance. It is God saying to us, this is what I did for you. I gave my son, my only son, for you. I provided salvation for you. It's your choice today if you're going to follow me or not. Choose this day whom you are serving. And you know, every day you have to wake up and say, I choose this day to follow God. Why? Because it's so easy to go astray. So easy to let the things of the day get in your way. So easy to allow God to become not the center of your life. It's almost like after God gets us through a rough patch, we're totally dependent on him, and we say to him, okay, God, I've got it from here. And what happens? We tend to crash and burn again, just like the people of Israel. Choose this day whom you will serve. 